Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the second interview of the day. Uh, for if you're an engineer, what would you do? Uh, this afternoon, we have got Dr. Huda Morgan, who is a senior lecturer in material science at Kingston University. And uh, right on time, there we are. Um, and yeah, I'll hand over to yourself, Huda. Thank you, Joshua. Hi, everyone. I am thrilled to be here and talking to you. Uh, but I think it will be a good idea if I start sharing my screen and show you what am I talking about. That's fine. And while Huda does that, if, um, while the presentation is going on, if everyone has any questions, um, put them in the Q&A in the chat and we'll come to them at the end of the uh, presentation and Huda will be will happy enough to uh, answer them for you. And yeah, without further ado, you can crack on. Right. Okay. So as Joshua introduced me, I am... Um, Huda Morgan, I am a senior lecturer. I work at, the, at Kingston University in the Faculty of Science, Engineering and Computing. Specifically, I'm in the School of uh, Life Science, Chemistry and Pharmacy. Um, I just want to give you an idea about who I am. Where did I come from? I come from the Middle East, but I've lived most of my life here in the UK, in London. Um, I come from Iraq. My mom, Iraqi, my dad is Lebanese. So I've been here really long time, most of my life here. So I am a mom, I'm a grandma as well. I am a scientist, I love science. I am a teacher, I am a researcher, and I'm a STEM ambassador. I work a lot with uh, my student on developing their skills as well. And these are mainly not just for university, for employability and for life as well. And recently, last year, I won the best supervisor award, um, which was really, really um, the best award I could have thought of uh, working with young generation like um, some of them I go to school to meet and some of them in my own university. So just talk to you about my journey. So if I remember in a school, I loved every minute of being in a school, despite I'm not the greatest in maths, but I loved science as in chemistry, physics, biology. I loved history, geography, Despite my mother tongue is Arabic, I didn't like the Arabic much and I didn't do much. <laughs> I didn't do well in Arabic, but I did really well in English. So I was fascinated with things that how do they work like microscope? How does the microscope work? How can I like use it to, to look at things, to make them look bigger, to learn more about it? Learn more more about solutions. How would I bring prepared solutions? How do you, I use like scale to weigh out chemicals? How do I do titrations? How do I report my result? And I was fascinated with how much I can learn in school and take it further in my career. So my dream was to be a chemistry teacher and in university and here, here I am, I am doing my dream job, which is a senior lecturer in chemistry and material science. So I loved everything about school and hence now I am a STEM ambassador. I do go to school and I would love to hear from you if you want me to come around to your school to meet you, to talk to you about science and make the most of it basically. So a little bit about my background. I have done baccalaureate, which is the A-level equivalent in English, maths, and triple science. Um, also, I moved on to do my first degree in Basra University, followed by me coming to the UK and doing my master's in chemistry in Southampton University, then moved to do my PhD at Imperial College London. And because I've been teaching for a long time, I became a senior fellow of the Higher Education Academy, which is very prestigious like award for someone who has been teaching for a long time. 
So I just also wanted to tell you why I love what I do. I love teaching. I love educating young generation because I know we need you. We need the young generation to be our future scientists. We need to also think about changing lives. Some students are coming from different backgrounds and they need the support we can give them to change their life, their standard of living and their future. So I like to contribute to worldwide future uh, scientists. I also, as I said to you, I work a lot on skill development and that's what I want to expand, not just in university, in schools, in colleges. And this is what I'm doing currently. I love research. I've been told by my supervisors, I had green fingers and without research, we really can't do much. We need the research. We need to know what is happening. How can we solve problems in life? How can we prevent disease? For example, not just one disease, diseases. For example, you know very much with COVID. If we didn't have the research, we wouldn't have been able to produce the vaccine that is going to stop us from contracting the disease. And really, I want to be part of the global human well-being. So whatever research I am doing and my team as well, it does add up to the global research that will benefit not just us, the immediate uh, colleagues, the immediate neighborhood, community, but it will be uh, all over the world. I also love flying and I think we all have hobbies and I think we should really give it time uh, to, to enjoy them. So not just flying over London and flying uh, on holidays and stuff like that. I've been on simulator trying to learn how to fly and also try to little bit, know a little bit about the aviation industry. How do the, how the airplane can fly? What do you need to know? What do you need to learn? And expand my expertise. And hopefully, I know I'm getting a little bit old, but hopefully maybe in the future, I can be a pilot as well. So not just the scientist pilot as well. Uh, there is a, a big, and a long range of modules and courses that I teach in the university. And they range from chemistry to pharmaceutical sciences, to pharmacy, uh, to forensic, and they're all connected. So I don't need to be expert in one and stay within that field. They're all interdisciplinary. So I can be, a chemist, but I could be also teaching on pharmaceutical sciences and pharmacy as well. So these are the courses currently I do teach in Kingston University. I also had a stall during the fresher weeks where I was meeting with students, young, new student, mature student, first year, second year, all, all levels. And I was going through their skills development and what do I need to support them to improve these. So I've given them a checklist and they needed to basically assess themselves and to see where they are, where they are their strengths and where are their weaknesses. And I worked on developing their weaknesses by giving them action plans to basically go through them together or separately, individually. And then we met again to see what has been improved. Um, most of the students find it really useful because it did help them get into the right, on the right track to study, to get on with their colleagues and classmates, and also for day-to-day -day university and future employability. I also get involved in outreach. So I've been to schools and I would love to come to your school as well. We have something called lab in the lorry. So in the lorry, we've got quite a big range of techniques uh, that we can show you. And we also have range of 
activities that you can take part, which I think you will enjoy really very well. And you get to know more about what we do and more about the science. So a lab in Alori that has been put on hold for a bit because of COVID, but we are now resuming our activities. And in a couple of weeks time, I will be in that lab in Alori visiting one of the schools in uh, Hampton, which is across the river from Kingston. So it all started at Imperial College when I became a PhD student working on ceramics. And I enjoyed every minute of being a researcher because I tried to find out why and when and how and where answering all these questions. So this is very much close to my heart, uh, Imperial, where I did my first degree. Then for my first job, I went to work at the Royal London Hospital and I prepared the bone material. And I was fascinated to know that there is something called the elephant man skeleton. It was at the medical college. Um, but also I was fascinated because there is the air ambulance on top of the building and I could hear the ambulance on and off to save lives. And I get, became really more interested and more fascinated about flying and airplanes. So at the Royal London Hospital, I worked with colleagues on preparing the bone materials and we really needed that because it is very much useful for bone repair and also we learned about the dental decay what happens if you eat sugary food you don't have a hygiene routine and you drink fizzy drinks it will help all in speeding up the dental decay I uh, wanted to know more about it, not just that. So I learned that we lose all the minerals, not all, but the minerals that are important within the teeth uh, component and composition. And they all happen beneath the surface. We might see the dental decay happening on the surface, but in re really, if you look at it um, under the well, use the, some kind of uh, radiography, you will see it is about one millimeter beneath the surface. But uh, more than that, I wanted to learn about how can I join the bone with muscles to create the bionic and the robotic, which something I wanted to, but then I was only on a three years contract. I didn't have the time to to finish off, but there's something which I would like to carry on. So research was at the heart of what I was doing and it took me further than I thought it will because I learned a lot about how to prepare the bone materials, how to defeat the dental decay and how would I be able to re repair bones in the future. So also what fascinated me at the Royal London Hospital, there was the elephant man skeleton in the museum and he was just a normal person to start with, but he started developing some kind of deformity in his bone. And he had so much trouble living because of the, because of his shape, because of the bone that was growing out of his face, out of his hand and leg. So he didn't have an easy life and he was kept at the Royal London Hospital where he was cared for until he died at the age of 27, which is really young. But that disease also made me think, what can I do? What can I think of to help future generation? Um, what was the problem or what was the disease is something that has been caused by mosquitoes and attack the lymphatic system. So if the lymphatic system is in charge of our immune system and getting rid of the waste and the poisonous uh, materials was affected 
no wonder he had a difficult life and he has to go through certain treatment while he was at the Royal London and some of it taking anti-parasitic drugs, keeping the area clean, elevated that and so on. So my publication on that bone material was published globally. So it was not just helping me and the neighborhood and the community, but whatever I learned, it was disseminated uh, globally. Then I ended up at Kingston University in 2014, being a senior lecture, permanent senior lecturer, a university that is very much well known be, for being cosmopolitan and recently won the prize, uh, Sterling Prize for the best building in UK. So I also started as a research scientist and I enjoyed every minute of my research, but then I've joined the teaching team and I was also teaching as well as um, researching. So I just wanted to let you know that you might not be able to love all these subjects, but I don't think we all have to love this subject. But if you decided to study chemistry, it's not just going to be pure chemistry. You will be also learning about maths, about forensic science, about pharmacology. If someone decided to go into chemical engineering uh, field, it's not going to be just that. It will be also connected to chemistry, to pharmacology. If you decided to go into computer science, you will need physics. So all of these, the reason I mentioned these, because they are interconnected. I cannot study just chemistry pure chemistry without knowing more about uh, calculating the concentrations and also preparing. I need the skills to go with it as well. So there are all these subjects are interrelated and interconnected with each other. And an example on chemistry that can take you to different field of employability. For example, if you have chemistry, you could be doing science writing, you could be managing, you could be marketing, you could be tutoring. So it doesn't end just chemistry. And without research, we wouldn't have been able to uh, produce the vaccine. We wouldn't have been able to uh, basically go to the dentist and have our teeth x-rayed and know where is the decay. And not just that, also, if we are in pain, we could take aspirin, but we take it as a tablet, but there is so much work has been done, how to synthesize the aspirin, how to market it, how to store it, how to sell it. Um, so it's all, again, it's all connected. So you need the chemistry as well as uh, other related uh, subjects and topics. So, what also interests me, the number of cases of the cancer cases has been growing up rapidly all over the world. And because of the chemotherapy and the side effect, I was thinking maybe we could treat that with some kind of natural product. So with the COVID impact, we had a long waiting list. There is a pressure on the NHS. There is long delayed of the COVID recovery, unnecessary death, expensive. So my idea was to move into more uh, using natural product, consuming natural product, because for a drug to be discovered, it takes a long time and millions of money to be able to produce the right drugs. And this is just an example of the drug cycle. So what better than prevention? Prevention is better than cure. So I was thinking, okay, I think I would want to stick to the natural products for my research. And currently we are working on using, consuming Ajwa date for combating, to combat neoplastic disease such as cancer. So I have a paper or publication currently under review and will be published 
in the near future. Just to give you an idea about what has gone into the research into the Ajwa date. We've looked at the Ajwa date extract and we, we've seen what is it made of. It's a long chain of carbon with loads of um, carbon and hydrogen and also many functional groups that defined what compound we have. And we have seen a specifically a compound called rutin, and this is the structure for the rutin. Rutin is one of the anti-cancer component that has stopped the cancer from developing further or growing, which is something I am going to be in discussion with the NHS to perhaps think of a way consuming date on a daily basis to prevent cancer. So I think we definitely need you because you are our future scientists and you're going to help further with research and perhaps you will be coming up with more ideas, more than me, because you will have more time to, to uh, in research basically. So if we can avoid hospital and going into hospital and diseases and stuff like that will be amazing. So it, I think it will be in your hand. Also having you as pilot or scientists or doctors or any uh, within any of the STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering and math, you will be supporting the population, the world by saving lives. So you don't have to be in love in one particular topic and you just want to stick to it. No, I think you would have the chance to explore and be good in whatever you chose to be uh, with the support of your teacher and the support of others. So this is our, uh, these are our courses that we offer, but also I wanted to make sure that you get my email address, you know who I am, where I work, and I am ha more than happy to come and see you. I'm better off in face-to-face -face rather than online. I would love to meet you. I'd love to be um, of any help to you and Basically, yeah, I hope you enjoy the presentation. I was not sure what to say, but I think Joshua gave me some guideline and I hope it worked. So thank you so much for listening and I'm open for questions. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a, a great uh, presentation. Thank you. Yeah, so if some uh, people can send some questions, that would be great. Um, just step, stepping onto that one with the lab in the lorry, what do um, schools have to do, obviously, to get in contact if they want that going to their school? Is direct you can um, you know, Yeah, we, I think we have our marketing and communication team that deal with it. But I'm more than happy to send leaflets to schools or basically contact schools to who are interested to be visited by lab in a lorry. We usually have two labs in a lorry and they go across the UK. I mean, not going to Scotland, for example, but we try to visit as many schools as possible. We do have leaflets, we do have email, we do have contact, but I'm happy to, to supply these whenever required. Like I can send them to you a bit later. Brilliant, thank you. And so going back to the start, who inspired you um, to take this career path? Was it, do you have so, someone you looked up to? Was it someone in the family? You know, what inspired you to take this, you know, to take this particular route in, in your career? Yeah, well, I think my teachers inspired me and also my teachers, they believed in what I was doing and what I wanted to do. So I think believing in yourself and having a role model is a good idea, but we need to also believe in what we can do, our abilities. And not necessarily, if someone is not really good in something, not specifically saying, okay, I'm not good and I'm not, I'm giving up. No, I can't do it. 
there is nothing impossible. You just have to keep on trying. Resilience is, is good. Um, and staying positive as well. So yeah, my teacher, I think my teachers inspired me and also they pushed me to become who I am. Fantastic. And what is the best moment in your career? So what is, you know, the best moment in your career? And secondly, you know, how fun is, is the job that you do? You know, obviously, because on your presentation, you know, you, it seems you've got so much going on. Um, do you have any particular favourites or is it all just together, you know, enjoyable uh, day in, day out? Well, I, I look at my job as my hobby and I love my job because I love helping students. I love inspiring students. And basically, when I was studying, I didn't get the full support. When I was doing my higher education, I didn't get the full support. So I always think the student would need me and I should be there for them. Guidance, I could be considered as a mom, as a teacher, as a colleague. Um, and basically, we, we cannot work individually. We are human beings. We meant to be working uh, together in a team um, and support each other. So I, there's nothing I don't like about my job. I love every minute of my job. And my students do feel that, and I do feel it in their progression. They do progress from level one to three to two to four, five, and they get good jobs because they have the solid background and they got the support they need. Fantastic. And I know you mentioned uh, previously at the start, um, that obviously you've won awards uh, and everything else. Are, is there any other particular awards and, and things that you're up for or you'd love like to win or be acknowledged for? Or Well, at the moment, I would like to do more as a STEM ambassador because I have been registered a STEM ambassador and I would like to go more to school and talk to, to students. And there is another award or another uh, maybe career progression that I'm working on. I'm working on my associate professor. So hopefully it will be happening soon. But I would like to go out more to schools and talk to, to young generation as long yeah. as they are willing and having the time and also invite some of them to come over to our outreach center and show them what we do, show them our labs, show them our lecture theaters, get to meet the staff, get to meet the students, just to be, just to feel, to, to have a feel for it before applying and yeah. thinking, oh, I'm not in the right place. I need to go somewhere else. No, that's fair enough. And going back to, obviously, you said this was a bit of a hobby. Now, if you weren't a scientist, um, what other hobbies would you have or what would you, what would you be if you wasn't doing what you're doing well, today? Well, I want to be a scientist. Yeah, <laughs> fair. If I was not a scientist, I would still want to be a scientist hmm. um yeah i'd like to do more in aviation i'd like to learn more in about aerospace and how do these planes fly and rockets and stuff like that but no i would definitely want to be a scientist that's fair enough and, and this is a question from silver tree primary now do you have to have a good imagination to be an engineer do i have do you have to have a good imagination to be an engineer? Uh, well, it does help, but I think you need to have the vision. You need to keep in mind that it's not going to be just the engineering. It has to be interdisciplinary. So it has to be, well, one subject complement the other. So you cannot just say engineering uh, is what I want to do in the future. You will have to be open. You have to have the open mind about other topics. That's fair enough. And if you was going, if you was to invent one more thing, what would it be that you'd like to to invent and like to get out there and share and you know in, in any field really something that you've also been thinking about for a while that could help us and yeah. help the world. Well, at the moment, I'm working on figs and dates to combat neoplastic disease, but I'm also currently expanding this into herbs and other uh, dry fruits that proved to be 
beneficial to to the human system and basically uh, strengthen the immune system to combat diseases. So I think I am more uh, willing to explore more when it comes to natural products. At the moment, I have some collaboration with the Kew Gardens about specific plant that we think is going to be very useful to combat cancer as well. But you know, cancer, you've got so many different cancers. So we're trying to, the work I've done recently is colorectal cancer, but the one I'm thinking with the Kew Garden will be more on breast cancer. So more exploration, exploration in, into the natural product. Yeah. Great, thank you. And um, I know you mentioned, you know, before when you were younger, what age was it uh, when you got into and interested in the science engineering and, and things? Was it early age primary school or was it something later on um, towards the end of primary school into high school? No, I was in primary school and it's all started in primary mm. school. I think it started in when I was about 11 years old. Uh, when I realized that I'm really good in science and I was getting good grades in chemistry and physics, I didn't get good grades in maths. I didn't like math too much, but it didn't stop me from advancing myself. And all what I needed to do is work hard to get my maths right. And when I needed the support, I did ask for the support. But yeah, at a very young age, I knew I wanted to be a scientist. And linking into that as well, uh, obviously, you know, being a, you came over, obviously, you know, born in Iraq. Has it been anything that um, has almost stopped you from becoming a scientist? Any barriers that you've uh, had to overcome? Any challenges? Well, I must say, um, Iraq is it's a little bit, it's tougher than here. So growing up in Iraq, it was not easy. You don't have the facilities. You don't have the 100% support, but I did, I think determination did keep me going. And when I moved to the UK, I knew how lucky our children are because they get all the support, the facilities, the, and there is, uh, there is fund to be spent on specific uh, activities while in where I was growing up in Iraq, we didn't have that uh, choice. So it was difficult, but I think determination is important that push that through. Fantastic. And what the most fascinating project that you've been involved in, obviously with other people, would you, can you particularly pick one or is it, pretty much every, every project you've worked in really? Well, the most, the one fascinated me is the bone material. I managed to prepare the bone itself. And I realized that I have gone really, not just one step, 10 steps farther than I thought. And be, be, being in the hospital, being at the Royal London Hospital, which is the oldest hospital in UK, it was an honor to work there with dentists and doctors. So whatever I prepared as in bone material, we have tested that, we have analyzed that, and we have uh, built artificial tooth, artificial um, femur, and we were doing some testing on it, like the demineralization and remineralization. We had buffer solutions. So it was really good to go through almost real or mimic the real bone material and see how it behaves in buffer solutions as in with pH 2 or pH 7 or pH 9. So it was really good. And that was the highlight, I would say, of the research I have done so far. Brilliant. And this one goes obviously back to, you know, quite recent, obviously, you, you know, the senior lecturer at the moment at King's University. What has been um, the biggest success from the people that you've obviously you've taught? Have you had any great success stories where they've gone on and, and excelled? And, you know, what, what type of things have come from that, really? Yeah, I mean, most of the students I supervised, they were 
project student, they managed to get PhD opportunities at Imperial. So about a couple of months ago, I had we had a meeting and we had the head of pharmacy, uh, pharm uh, chemistry came to visit. And two of my students, they were my project students, they were doing their PhD and one of them almost finished and the other one in his third year. So they were delighted to be here and they did acknowledge that one of the reasons they are here to, to visit us is to say hello to me because they haven't seen me for a while and I was their project supervisor, I was their mentor, I was their like, uh, would you say, mom supporting them all the time. <laughs> so my students, most of them, when they finish, I stay in touch with them and I know their progress and they have been lucky to find amazing jobs as well. Fantastic. Now, this is a good question, actually, from Solitary Primary School. Um, do your own children uh, show an interest in science and engineering like yourself? Well, yeah. Or are they two... totally different to... to... <laughs> my two sons, one of them <clears throat> is accountant, so he is very much in maths. The other one, he is in computer sciences, so he is very much like mm -hmm. programming and stuff like that. But my grandchildren, one of them is very much in science. So she loves being uh, in chemistry classes and she seems to be doing really well. So I Fantastic. have managed to influence, but I think my influence was more uh, predominant in university rather than at home. Fair enough, fair enough. Now, if you can discuss this or not, but have you made um, a mistake or anything in, in, in your research where you've had to then obviously start briefing and, and and try, you know, a new approach and a new way of looking at things? Yeah, I mean, no one is perfect. We all do mistakes. We are a human being at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, when we did some mistakes in research, we had to redo and restart again and basically design a different uh, experiment to combat that problem or keeping the same. Like recently I had a student working on a project that testing how much sugar in the Ajwa date, starting with one piece and going up to seven pieces. And she had a problem with, the, with measuring the sugar using refractometer. Uh, we realized she had not removed that cover that is protecting the piece of glass for the refractometer. So she had to prepare a new range of solutions and then redo the calculations. So yeah, no one is perfect. We can, I even forgot to say that you need to remove that piece. It's a brand new equipment we, you, we bought, but we didn't know we were not aware how to use it so we had to read the manual and then make sure that we we used it properly so yeah we have we there are mistakes happening but we learn from our mistakes no that's definitely true and um so what's your major love chemistry rather than physics and biology or you know is it something that you you love equally but you decide to you know do more on chemistry side or is is it yeah, I think also in within the family, uh, my uncle was a chemist who did his PhD in America and came back to Iraq and he was teaching in the university. So there was the feel of the chemistry in the house as well. Uh, so I think we do get, we learn more about subjects and topics and stuff like that if it's been practiced by parents or siblings or even close friends that you can be influenced by. So chemistry for me was, was fascinating, colors and smells and reactions. Physics was a little bit boring because I couldn't see what was happening. It was very much like hidden. Um, mm. Chemistry was more obvious and more interesting. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's fine. And so what is 
the most you enjoy about your job? Like, is it uh, do you get satisfaction from seeing people succeed or satisfaction from what you've done in the past? You know, what is what do you enjoy most about the job, your job that you do? Um, well, my job is it's not, I can't say just giving the lecture. I, I first of all have to bond with the student because the student, um, they need to like the subject. I think uh, we were frozen for a bit. Yeah, it's okay, we're back now. <laughs> well, um, giving a lecture or delivering a practical or um, engaging the student with some kind of uh, activities, chemical uh, activities, workshop, lab session, practical, um, depend on the lecturer. So if you were going to make it fun as well as learning, it's not going to be the same as just delivering and, and, and just leave the lecture theater. So it has to be, I have to include and embed some fun into the activity to make it more interesting and to make it more engaging with the student. I, most of my lectures are interactive uh, and basically I start with the questions and then we build it on, we build the knowledge on that. So the success is being able to communicate properly and manage to get that piece of information delivered to the student in a very clever way and in a very um, interactive way. Get them involved. I don't do, I prepare my lectures, but I get the student involved. I go around, I speak to them. We can have love, we can have a joke. We can talk about experience that we've gone through personally. Um, but, being working together is that I work in partnership with the students. So working with them closely and also I do mentoring. So some students are willing to, ha to help the others who are a little bit weaker. And it's like a nice working teamwork relationship where they sit together, work together and mostly group work is more successful than individual work. So when the student work in a group of two or three or five, they deliver better results than working on their own. Yeah, fantastic. That's a, yeah, that's great. We got this is one just about the helicopter uh, situation. So did you say you've you've flown helicopters or you're currently learning that process? I, or? I went on several helicopter rides. So the fascinating two fascinating one one over London. Uh, you can get that from Battersea. There is a company called the London Helicopter. You can get uh, 25 minutes over London. Of course, there was a pilot, but then you can communicate and you can learn more about it. The other fascinating one is in Iceland. So I went on that and I could see volcanoes and uh, yeah, it was amazing. But my my loved one is the one over London because London is for me is home and this is I think London is the capital of the world. So yeah, at the moment I'm learning on the simulator, um, which is University of East London. They have simulator and you can book two three hours. So so far I have booked about seven hours, uh, but. I need a license and I need certain number of hours to be able to be a pilot. Fair but enough. at the moment I'm enjoying flying uh, when I go on holiday, I have to see the captain. So, so many times I have taken pictures in the cockpit with the captain. Um, yeah. So I think the Amazing. children will love to be pilots going on simulator, learning about how the plane can fly and also we have a plane in our in one of our sites. So if any of the children interested, I can organize um, half half a day to go and see the helicopter and be on the simulator. We have a simulator as well. 
Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of people, including myself, actually might, um, might uh, go yeah, down I'm for that welcome. one. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Um, so regards to obviously, you know, travel, have you doing the research and what your job, have you traveled and been elsewhere? Uh, was it just Yes, you know, but, yeah. we, do, we do go for conferences and I have traveled yeah. around. I've traveled to Spain, France, uh, Belgium, uh, America, Switzerland, Ireland, because we do attend conferences. And sometimes I have worked on three projects. One of them is EU project that I have to meet on a regular basis with the University Claudie Barnard in Lyon. And there was an MRC grant that I worked on it or a MRC project that I worked with the University of Bristol and also with Brighton University. And there was another EU uh, project that I worked on with, with Barcelona water treatment mm. uh, with the Queens, at Queens University in, I think in, in, uh, in Limerick. And Manchester University and a com water company in Nice. So yeah, I've traveled around wow. for <laughs> for conferences. I don't know if uh, you can manage to find the time. You seem very busy and um, constantly doing things, which is uh, amazing, to be fair. And um, yeah, you, you know, it's been fantastic. And I think the last question I will ask um, before obviously this interview ends is, what advice would you give to everyone that's listening today, all the pupils, all the, you know, all the students, to follow the dreams, you know, and to be inspired and, you know, potentially become yourself, like yourself and become an engineer and science, what advice would you give? Well, first of all, believe in yourself. Don't take any negative comments. Stay positive, stay focused. You can do it. If you want to do something, if you want to achieve, no one is going to stop you. It's only yourself. So go for it and put the effort in, put the time in because nothing is going to be easy. Where I am now, it took me years and years to be who I am and what do I do. But I've been always open to suggestion, positive ones, not negative ones. Um, work hard because you cannot achieve, as I said, without working hard. And if you are interested in something, do pursue that because it's you and your future. If you want to be in a successful job and you want to have a nice life, you want to go on holidays all the time, you want to be on helicopter, um, you have to put the effort and you have to ask for the support if you need it. You cannot do it by yourself, ask for the support. We cannot be, we, can, we don't have magic, there is no magic. Determination, uh, hard work and positive. It can take you long, long way. Don't worry about what is happening around you if someone wants to uh, take you down or you feel that, oh, I'm not good enough because my friend told me. Your friend doesn't know you. You know yourself more than the friend knows you. So believe in yourself and follow your dream. It does not matter if you are not amazingly good in maths, but you are really good in other subjects. So don't, don't let anything take you down. Just go forward and aim higher. Fantastic. I mean, yeah, I think that pretty much causes uh, the interview. I think that's uh, fantastic. Yeah, so very much appreciated for that. And I want to thank you, everyone, uh, that signed on today and listened to this fascinating uh, interview. And this will be on our YouTube channel at some point soon. And we do have more interviews coming forward. Uh, we are getting busy towards Science Engineering Week, where we'll have two a day. Um, so keep an eye out for the emails. And yeah, once again, uh, thank you very much, everyone. And thank you, Dr. Tudor Morgan, for that. Bye bye. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please do let me know if anyone is interested in visiting or they want us to go and visit. But I will send you all the details for the lab in Alori. Brilliant. Thank you. And I can share that obviously elsewhere with, with the people that I've asked as well. So brilliant. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you.